Hey folks, welcome to Wednesday night. So glad you could turn, tune in tonight. I'm so excited about what God's doing in the earth today. I know there's some perilous times going on. Paul told Timothy that, and when he spoke to him, he said in the last days there'd be perilous times, and we sure see those happening, things happening around the world today, right here in our own country and in the foreign countries, like we watching it, all the stuff going on with Afghanistan and, and all the, just the violence we have here. That was predicted long before. And I just want to tell you though, uh, even though we have bad times, we need to keep our focus on God's word, keep our focus on him and, and he will bring us through because it's, it's important. That's where we should base our lives on, is on his word. You know, I find it interesting that many Christians, uh, they accept Jesus, but they, they, they go so far and they quit. I remember, uh, oh, I forget who it was, might've been uh, Lester Summerall, uh, said that many Christians don't go any further than that first step of being born again. And you know that we're not, we're to go further than that. We're to stay in the word and grow in the things of God. We're not to back off. This is a journey, my friends. And I, and you want to finish strong. And in order to do that, you got to know the word of God. Now, listen, the word of God is going to be here. Heaven and earth shall pass away. It said, but my word shall by no means pass away. That's what Jesus said over in Matthew 24. It also says in Isaiah 40, verse eight, the grass wither, wither, withers, I said that earlier today. In fact, I was at a prayer meeting and we used that very scripture. The, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. How many of you know that? We're to, we're to be in the word. We call ourselves word people, but how many know a lot of people don't know the word? don't know the promises, don't know who they are in Christ. Don't We have to continue in the word. I've said this many times, one of my favorite scriptures, and I said probably just about every week or every other week is John 8, 31, 32. If you continue in my word, that's Jesus, you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free or make you free. We, you can't be walking in darkness and, and in the light without the truth. That's that's the problem. But what are we to do in the midst of all this? You say, well, Mike, you don't understand. Uh, things aren't going well in my life. Well, we're we're told how to deal with certain things in the Bible. I mean, you know, he he's, he knows what we have need of. Let's turn to, if you will, over to Philippians chapter four. One of another fa uh, uh, passage of scripture that I love. And it says right here in verse four, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How many of you know it, it's important to rejoice? Pastor Scott was talking about having the joy of the Lord on Sunday. I'm telling you, if you got joy, you have to begin to rejoice. Well, how do you do that, Mike? I'm, I'm having trouble financially. I'm going through this relationally. You do it by faith. Everything we appropriate, everything we have is by faith, believing what God said. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Over in James, in uh, chapter 1, verse 2, says, Count it all joy. Let me just read that. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. How many? That, he's speaking to Christians there, my friends. You know, we have some people uh, that I've heard over the years, well, I'm, now that I'm born again, it seems like the devil's after me all the time. He was after you before. He didn't have to hurt, work too hard because he already had you. But, at, but he doesn't quit doing that. We all go through trials. We all go through uh, uh, things in our life. But it goes on to say, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Then it tells us how to walk in wisdom. If you lack wisdom, you know, many times we lack wisdom and how to deal with things. Why? Because we, first of all, we don't know the word. Secondly, we're not uh, inquiring. <laughs> you know, we, we, uh, inquiring minds want to know from God what he has for them, how to go. It says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives all liberally and without reproach and will be, it will be given unto him. In other words, we don't have to beg God. We just have to begin to ask God. How many of you know if you're not in the word of God, though, it's hard to rejoice because all you're doing is you're focusing in on the troubles that you have. And you can so easily, how many of you know it's so easily to lose focus? I was, I was driving back from Danville for that, from that uh, prayer meeting. How many times have you taken your eyes off the road just for a second? And you could be in the ditch just like that, or you could be in an accident. 
you know, and, and it's, it's your losing focus. You got to stay focused all the time. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you, if you go and have surgery, you better pray that the, the doctor, that surgeon has focus because a little bit of misfocus, uh, where he doesn't see little distraction could cause you a lot of problems. So we need to stay focused on the word of God. Now, listen, you're, uh, here's what the message Bible says in, in James one. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. How many of you know you're going to find out real quick whether you're standing in faith or you're not? And so your faith life is being pushed out into the open. Either you're believing God and agreeing with God or you're not. Now listen, you know if you don't, you're opening up yourself to agree with the enemy. You're either agreeing with what God says in his word, which gives him opportunity. Listen, he doesn't want to force something on you, but when you agree with what he's already done, he can begin to do that for you. Amen? When you say, Lord, even though I'm going through this, I'm going to rejoice right in the midst of this trouble because I know you're a God that's for me, not against me. All the time, you'll take me through this rather than saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. Nothing ever seems to work out. Well, you just opened yourself up for the enemy to come in and do his negative uh, and, uh, work in your life. So we have to know that. So how do you respond to the circumstances will determine uh, your future? That's, that's the th truth of the matter is. How you respond to adverse circumstances will determine your future because we all go through circumstances. And you know that as well as I do. And, and I'll tell you what, the enemy doesn't play fair. He likes to blindside people. He likes to catch you off guard. But if you're prayed up, if you're full of the word of God, it should be first nature. I, we were talking about that in our small group this morning. I believe that with all my heart. It's not just you renew your mind. It says, uh, uh, Paul said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This, that that, uh, that subconscious area, that limbic system, as a, the, the uh, psychologists call it, that's the part where you do things and you don't even realize why you do them because it's in subconsciously, you, you, it's, that's in your heart. So you renew your mind to the word of God on a regular basis so it becomes first nature. When something happens, uh, it doesn't matter. Lord, help me or Lord, show me right now what I need to do. I'm praying before I even call 911 sometimes, you know, he's first nature. It's first, first call. So we rejoice and he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Well, how do we do that, Mike? How do we do that? We do it by faith. Lord, I just do it now. Just do it now. Say, Lord, I rejoice in the God of my salvation. I thank you that I rejoice in the fact that I'm saved on my way to heaven. I'm born again, filled with the Holy Ghost and power. <laughs> I mean, you know, we got power when you got the Holy Ghost. And if you're not using that power, it just goes dormant. But call it up. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm, I'm full of the Holy Ghost and power. And I'm believing for greater and mightier things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everywhere I go, I have the favor of God on my life. That I can rejoice over that. Well, things aren't going too well, but I rejoice that you're taking me through in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm happy about that. I'm excited about that. Listen, we had a great prayer meeting on Monday night. If you can ever get out to one of our prayer meetings, get out there. I believe the Lord is doing something. We had a, a bigger number of people than we normally have, and we prayed in the Holy Ghost, and we saw God speak through us through uh, uh, words of knowledge and, and tongues and interpretation. And, and Lord, I'm telling you, it's, it's a blessing, but you got to begin to rejoice in the fact that he will do that for you because he's already paid the price for it. Amen? Now, we're going through trouble. How do you stay focused in the midst of trouble? Listen, the Creflo Dollar used to say, trouble your trouble. In other words, be, be, be a, uh, put up your defense and trouble your trouble. It says in verse 6, be anxious for what? Nothing. Well, uh, one rendering says, do not fret or worry about anything. That's the message Bible. Don't fret or worry about anything. You know, God doesn't want us to worry. Well, Mike, you don't understand what, what's going on with my kids, or you don't understand what's going on in my, with my relation. I don't know. I don't quite understand. He told us to rejoice first for, what, for the promises we have, for who we are in Christ. But he says, don't worry, because worry, you know, the old saying, worry never changed anything. Now, I have to fight that. 
I'm not saying I do it all the time right, but I'm telling you, when you begin to rejoice, it seems so much easier to cast off worry, doesn't it? And he says, be anxious for nothing, but by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. First of all, he's saying, don't be worrisome. Don't be anxious. Then he's going on to say, then you pray your request with supplication and thanksgiving, you let your request be known unto God. Then it says, and then you can have peace. Goes on to say that. Now, it says in Matthew 6, 25, you know these scriptures, it's, this Jesus says in the King James, it says, take no thought. How many of you know you gotta guard your thoughts? In 2 Corinthians 10, verses three through five, it says, guard your heart, guard your, take captive every thought that's contrary to the word of God. That's a paraphrase, but you can look that up yourself. Contrary to the word of God. What's contrary to the word of God? When you say something that, that doesn't agree with what God says. That's how we get in agreement. If, and, and then we get to the fact that any two of us shall agree. I really believe if you agree with the Holy Ghost, that's two right there. We can begin to agree to ourselves and say, I agree with you, Lord. It, it's what you say. But it says, don't worry about your life or what you eat or what you would drink, nor about your body or what you uh, will put on or any of those things. Because he goes on to talk about, hasn't he dressed the, the lilies of the field and hasn't he dressed the, the birds and the, all the, the, uh, the wildlife and all that stuff, you know, and, and arrayed the flowers. But then he says, what, what's he say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Wow. Seek first the kingdom of God. Keep your focus on the kingdom. And this, and keep, I'm, I'm quoting this, but keep, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things that you need, all the things you need, everything you need. Maybe you need a, a better relationship with somebody. Maybe you need finances. Maybe you need a healing. Maybe you need deliverance. I don't know what you need tonight. You know, but you seek first the kingdom of God. Well, how can you seek first the kingdom without knowing his word? You have to know his word. So you get in his word and, and then you keep your focus. Oh, how easy it is to lose focus. That's why uh, over in, he tells us, uh, uh, forsake Hebrews 10, 25, I think it is, four and five. Do not forsake yourselves of assembling together with yourselves as you know, and especially in this day and this hour, as the Lord returns, about to return. Why? We have something we can gain from each other. We can build one another up. Iron sharpens iron, doesn't it? When we're around people, that's why I always like to, uh, when I do these messages a lot of time, it's in the afternoon on Wednesday. Why? Because I like to come back from that prayer meeting from my sp our small group and, and be built up and then all of a sudden it just flows out of you. Well, if you do that on a regular basis, you're not gonna be caught off guard. You won't lose your focus. Now, times can be bad if we don't lose our focus and be distracted because everything's happening around us, we can have God's will in our life. Amen? Aren't you glad that you can know some people? Now, this is a big deal here. You gotta be careful what you hear and who you hear it from. Uh, there are people out there, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be critical, but I'm telling you, a little leaven can leaven the whole lump. You, you hear somebody talking about, well, I'm not sure God heals today. Well, guess what? When you, get, if you have a problem, you're, you're, that little doubt seeks up in the back of your mind. How, uh, how many of you know, well, God doesn't worry about your finances. How many of you know he wants to have you wealthy, healthy, wealthy, and wise so you can show the kingdom of God here on earth? Amen? Now, he also tells us in Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I would ask you tonight, where's your faith? You know, many times Jesus would, uh, had told people, uh, 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 where's your faith? If you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you'd say into the mountain. And he'd say, but he also said, saw people with great faith. He said to the woman with the issue of blood, what do you say to her? Your faith has set you, or made you whole. What do you say to this, uh, the, the centurion when he came to him? When the centurion says, just speak a word. You're, I'm a man under authority. I under, recognize authority. Just speak a word. My servant will be healed. And Jesus, he, he said, he had never heard such great faith in all of Israel. Amen? Amen. So where's your faith tonight? Well, then over in Matthew, well, that was uh, Matthew uh, chapter 8. Let me get over there real quick. I always like, that may be the one I was just talking about. 
Yeah, it was a centurion. He says, as surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Huh. Isn't that amazing? What is God saying? What is God saying to you right now? He'd say, where's your faith? Well, how do you build faith? Faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. So if you're not hearing the word of God on a regular basis, guess what? The, the, the greater influence is gonna be from the outside influence, not from God's influence, but from the outside. So let's go back and see what it says. Be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God and the peace which passes surpasses all understanding. How many of you know there's a peace that does surpass all understanding because you can't understand it when you're going through something or something that's happened in your life and yet you have peace. That's God's peace, amen? Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He says, goes on to tell you how to do that. Finally, he said, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, or whatsoever things are of good report. I mean, you know, you don't find much of that in the world today, do you? It comes from God, it comes from his word. If there is anything, any virtue or anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. See, worry is meditating on, on what the devil is saying, on the world, on the negative, and, and is saying, Worry can bring you uh, fear. How many of you know what God hasn't given us? The spirit of fear. But fear can what? You start worrying about something, the next thing you know, you got a fear about it. I mean, this, this is what, in all honesty, that's what this pandemic has done. That's what all these crises around the world's doing. It's bringing fear. And what the fear does, it'll bring separation. It'll cause you not to operate in what God said. I, I remember uh, reading this one time. And, and there might be some different people that different, uh, agree, disagree with this, but I believe Job, in Job 3.25, he said this. You know, Job went through a lot, didn't he? But he said this, For the thing I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come up unto me. Faith is in your heart, and it will, you have to talk faith. If you want fear in your heart, you're going to be talking fear. That's, the way, that's why you've got to be careful what you hear, who you're hanging out with, at all times, worry will bring on fear, and fear activates the enemy. We don't want to activate the enemy for nothing. We don't want to give him credit for anything, do we? Now, we will often say, well, the one thing you can give him credit for, he he's, uh, uh, doesn't give up. He just keeps going. Well, that, <laughs> we're not going to give him that either because we can overcome. But what we have to know, you're either operating in faith or you're operating in fear. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, Proverbs 4. Now, you know, I'm, uh, Mike, you'd say, well, I've heard all that before. You know, I've heard it all before, too. And I'm planning on hearing a lot more times. Why? Because this is where we live, my friends. This is where we live. We live in the Word of God with the, uh, the Spirit of God propelling us on. You know what that says in John 6, 63? Uh, you know, uh, the, the words, uh, uh, the, the flesh profiteth nothing, but the words that I speak... Jesus said, our spirit and their life. Spirit and life. How, the, what's that? the words that he speaks. Hallelujah. Well, you must know the words that he speaks. And then what do you do? You begin to speak them for yourself. That's agreement. Lord, I thank you right now. I'm just like I said a while ago. How do you rejoice? You rejoice in faith. Regardless of what you're going through, you just say, I rejoice. I rejoice in the God of my salvation. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Do you really know that? If you say it often enough, it'll become a reality to you. It'll become a revelation to you. But over in uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse uh, 20, my son or my daughter, that's what it means, give attention to what? My words. Incline your ear to my sayings. In other words, don't be listening to all this stuff. You can be on a supposed conservative network, but if you're listening, you're looping that all day, all you're going to hear is the negative that's going on over one group or another, but you got to get away from that. That'll start dragging you down. Do, do not let them depart from your eyes. In other words, keep your eye in this book. Keep looking at this book. Keep them in the midst of your heart. What's your heart? That place you live, your mind, your will, your emotions. It's not, it, it's not uh, that pump down here. Amen? If you want that pump to work right, you got to, you got to begin to speak the word of God over yourself but that's your true, your heart. Because Jesus said, 
out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. You know, you give the enemy a right to operate in your life when you're not speaking the word of God, when you're speaking the negative things of the world. You're opening up yourself. And he goes on to say, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it swing, spring the issues of life. Put away from your mouth or, your, or from you a deceitful mouth and put and perverse lips far away from you. I, I just have to say, it's important that we have the word of God. It goes on to say in, in a New Living t uh, Translation, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. In the message, it says this, keep my message in plain view at all times. In other words, get the word of God. You know, sometimes I, I wish I knew more, I'm, but only if I wish I know more, I gotta do more, I gotta study more. Study to show yourself approved. But I tell you, it's so easy if you put in the word of God on a regular basis when you begin to need it, which is often, it'll just begin to roll out of you because the Holy Spirit will bring unto remembrance those things that you put in. In Joshua 1.8, 1, it says meditate the day, uh, word day and night, doesn't it? Meditate the word day and night. Uh, it tells us uh, to be careful what we hear, but in Joshua, let me just turn to that real quick. We need to hear this on a regular basis. I'll find it here in a minute. It's way back here, way back in the Old Testament. There it is. Listen, he says, uh, he's telling us to be strong in the Lord. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you sh shall meditate in it day and night, and that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. But meditate that word day and night. Careful what you hear. Hear the right things. On 1 John 5, 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The word of God will build your faith. Amen? It'll build your faith. It's important to stay focused. Don't lose your focus, my friends. Don't run off the road. <laughs> Get in a spiritual ditch, and uh, hopefully there'll be somebody come along and pull you out. But you got, you got to guard your heart, keep your heart on God's word. In 2 Peter in 1, 4, God has given us to us exceedingly great and precious promises. You, if you don't know those promises, you can't rely on them, right? So we need to rely on the promises of God. Over in, in Isaiah 54, 17 says this. This is a promise right here. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. How many of you know that? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen, aren't you glad of that? Say that with me tonight. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. No weapon, say that. <laughs> no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. There may be things coming against you tonight that only God can help you out. So we're just, we're just gonna believe, amen, that you're gonna be focused on the word of God, focused on the things of God, wherever you, and grow, amen, and go from glory to glory, faith to faith and glory to glory. We're not to back up, not to sit down and take relax we're to stay strong in the lord and the power of his might can you say amen out there amen well let's just pray before we get off here our time's about up father we thank you that you help us to stay focused it's focused on the word of god which puts us over in every situation not only do we take it in our heart but we speak it out of our mouth because then it becomes alive alive unto what you have for us in Jesus' name. Thank you for all your promises and, and blessings that you've blessed us with. May we walk in them. May we grow stronger in them every day. doesn't matter how long we've been a Christian. We need to continue in that. We need to grow in that. And Lord, I'm thankful that you've given us the privilege to be able to stand strong and pray in this day and this hour, how we need your help in every situation. And Lord, I'm thankful that we can pray. I pray for the church, just like it says over in Second Chronicles, if my people that are called by my name, which is the church, will humble themselves and pray and, and, and turn from their wicked ways and, and seek his face, seek your face, Lord, and humble ourselves. You will, you will change the world, change our world especially, and we can stand in for others that don't know you. So we thank you for it and give you all the praise tonight in Jesus' precious name. Well, thanks for being here tonight, and uh, I'll see you next time.